Redbeard here from the Warrior Tribe uh, with a stage two of homemade hard cider. Um, it's been about 11 days since I started the fermentation process. It normally is about a two week process, but uh, I think because I did such a smaller amount, it was a little bit quicker. Um, and I kept it nice and warm uh, in my little closet where I made it. So that kind of helps uh, keep things moving at the right pace for, uh, for fermentation. So there's some signs to look for to tell you whether it's done or not without having to use a, uh, um, a hydrometer, which is, uh, is a little instrument, little tool used to uh, test the alcohol levels. Um, without using one of those, you can use sort of your, your eye and your nose. Right, so first thing I want to check for is odor. Um, I'll smell inside there and it should smell like alcohol. And in fact, it does. It smells like alcohol and it smells like yeast. Um, the yeast odor will evaporate over time, but the alcohol will remain. Um, so that's a, a, the smell side of things. The other thing I want to look for is that there's no more uh, foaming activity uh, across the top. So as you can see, looking at the down, through here, there's no there's no more foam on the top. You see some sediment from the fermentation uh, must basically across the top. Um, the cider is still quite cloudy, but that's normal experience. And then looking down here, you'll see we have a nice amount of sediment at the bottom. Most of that is uh, dead yeast. Okay, so when we add the yeast, the yeast eats the sugar, uh, reproduces, multiplies, and then dies. So and then they all just sort of settle to the bottom. So what we're going to do. Today is we're gonna I'm gonna rack the cider off of the sediment into this cider jug. Okay, so I've got my siphoning piece of tube that's been sterilized with potassium metabisulfite, and uh, of course sterilized the jar as well. And then I've just got a, a one liter mason jar there for a little excess because I have started with six liters. And this is only a four liter jug, so that'll be five. There'll be a little bit of loss from left behind, and uh, that's okay. So anyways, guys, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get this siphon process going and move the cider from the carboy into the cider jug. So ideally, we would want to use a racking rod or a racking wand, which is a, a, a stiff piece of plastic tube that would hook up to this pipe and that would be able to insert down into the carboy. But I haven't got one of those and you know, it's a, it's a luxury. It's, a, it's nice to have, but you don't have to have it. You just need to be careful to keep the siphon away from the sediment so that you're not sucking up all that. And then if you do, it's not a huge deal, but then you might have to rack again if you want to get it off of the, uh, the sediment. So for those who don't know siphoning, you know, you put a hose into one side of a liquid and then you create a suction, a little bit of a vacuum, and then it will fall, ideally it will fall into this, uh, this jar from this side of the hose. So I've gone and lowered the carboy, or the uh, jug down to a lower level. That's going to help with the, uh, the uh, siphon. There we go. So we've got a nice siphon going there. I got a little bit in my mouth and I'll tell you, tastes like cider. It's a good thing. The alcohol content doesn't seem terribly high, maybe five or six percent. Hard to say. We'll let this do its thing. It's nice and dry. That's a good sign. That means the yeast did its work and ate up all the sugar. That's, a, that's a, a good sign. All right, guys, now that we've got the cider racked over from the carboy into the cider jug, okay, um, we have a couple options here. I can consume this now. It's ready to go. I've uh, taken a bit of a mouthful. I don't really drink alcohol too much, but uh, or at all really, but um, I did want to taste it to see what it was like. And uh, at this point, it tastes very much like uh, a proper cider. Um, it has a very, very slight carbonation to it, a natural carbonation. And, uh, and I like that. Um, so my options are I can 
consume this as it is. I can, you know, put a lid on that, throw it in the fridge, and drink it as I want. I could bottle it in smaller bottles, or I could also put it in, uh, put the airlock back in it, and put it back in the closet, and let it sit for another month or so. And then this cloudy color is going to clarify to probably, you know, the clarity of uh, apple juice. You know, nice and clear. Um, I'll have to rack it off that bit of sediment that falls down again, and then I can bottle it at that point if I'd like a clear product. Um, at that point, though, it's going to be 100% still. There's not going to be any carbonation left, um, so I have a couple options at that point. I can carbonate it with a CO2 carbonator, or I can uh, what they call back carbonate it by adding some more sugar and yeast and letting it do a, another ferment quick fermentation and then shutting that down with refrigeration. Um, that's more of an advanced step that I'm not really uh, too familiar with or comfortable doing at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this clarify and age for about a month and I wanna see how it is again after a month and see if the uh, flavor has improved and see how clear it will get. And if it gets clear and it's got a great flavor, what I'll probably do is make a larger batch another time, perhaps a full carboy, maybe even a large five gallon carboy. And then it'll be worthwhile to take it into my uh, workplace and carbonate it with the big CO2 carbonator. And that'll be kind of interesting. I, I think personally cider is best carbonated. I, uh, I like that, uh, that fizz, that beer-like fizz. Um, when it's sort of still, it almost tastes like a weak wine. But again, uh, that's sort of a, a very uh, common traditional way to drink it as well is, is still. Um, so yeah, I think this uh, first and second step have gone really well. And uh, I'm excited to try some different uh, experimentals uh, with the next batches. You know, you can add different fruits and spices and flavors and really can go all over the place. I think uh, I'd like to maybe try uh, upping the sugar content even more. Um, upon tasting this, it definitely tastes around a 5-6%. Um, and I'd really like to see that up to seven, eight, and maybe nine percent. Um, you know, I always think more bang for your buck, right? So yeah, I hope you found this, uh, you know, little second step of the tutorial beneficial. Um, stay tuned for the third step, guys. Uh, about a month, we'll do some progress report and see how the cider is clearing up. Anyways, guys, this is Redbeard. Thanks for watching.